Hello, I'm Jeff Hancock, pharmacist from Clinch Valley Medical Center in Richlands, Virginia. I'm here today to demonstrate proper aseptic technique used as it relates to USP 797 and USP 800 requirements. We're foregoing the typical donning of gown, mask, gloves for demonstration purposes. Today I'll be demonstrating a simple transfer of five milliliters of a solution from a vial to a final product bag. The proper techniques used in reconstituting a dry powder and the proper techniques used in opening an ampule and transferring the contents to a final product bag. Let's get started. But first I want to discuss placement in the hood. When you gather your supplies after you've cleaned everything you want to move all your materials into a location that places them in first air. These needles and syringes aren't open, so they're not critical to the, to the project just yet. First thing I'm going to do is a simple transfer of 5 milliliters from a vial into the bag. First thing you do is remove the tops and sanitize all your critical sites. And while it's drying, you assemble your needle and syringe. And I typically fold the leaflets of the packaging to the outside, pull the vial out, and now I'm orienting the critical site into the path of first air. And the same is true with the needle. Always orienting it to first air. I'm going to make sure my plunger moves freely. At this point, I'll remove my needle cover and I'm going to choose some replacement air, something less than the five milliliters I'm drawing up. I keep the bevel vertical as I enter the vial and then I rotate the vial in such a manner to keep the critical site in first air. At this point I will pull on the plunger and release this allows me to keep a low pressure inside the vial. And once I've gotten rid of all the replacement air, I simply draw back to my desired volume. I hold the plunger in place. And to ensure a good negative pressure, I pull additional air as I separate. And you can see I still have my five milliliters of volume. If I need to evacuate the barrel of the syringe, I pull down to clear the cannula of the needle and hub and then slowly evacuate the air. And I act, grab my bag. At this point, the needle goes straight into the additive site on the bag. And I introduce my drug or simulated drug into the bag. And that is just a simple five milliliter transfer. If I'm reconstituting a powder, I would follow the same techniques. One wipe. allow those surfaces to dry. While they're drying, I assemble my needle and syringe.
And to reconstitute this powder, it's going to take 20 milliliters of sterile water. And the same technique applies. I generally pull, never pushing on the plunger. There's the first 10 milliliters. This powder requires 20 milliliters of sterile water. As I introduce the needle, I'm going to try to direct the flow of water to the side of the vial. And again, I pull back and let the vacuum pull it. And unfortunately, this particular powder takes a while to dissolve, so I'm going to set it to the side for further reconstitution. This is one case where I do want to recap my needle. I'm going to use the one-hand scoop technique so not to stick myself. I could easily use another syringe and needle in a few moments, but in the interest of economy, I'm going to use the same one. Now I'm going to demonstrate the proper techniques for opening and transferring the contents of an ampule. The first step is the same as with any additive. You're going to check the identity, strength, concentration, and expiration date. The second step is remove any residual drug from the neck of the ampule, which it's already gone. The third step is cleaning the neck of the ampule. I'm going to clean the neck of the ampule. That is the area to be broken, which is both a physical and a chemical sanitizing and allow to dry. While that is drying, I'm going to assemble my needle and syringe. And the fifth step is to break the ampule. And in my practice site, we add an additional step of rather than physically touching the glass, we wrap it in sterile gauze. And to do so, I'm going to wrap the ampule and keep both thumbs and all fingers on the gauze. And at this point, I'm going to push forward with both thumbs and pull back with my fingers and typically this operation is directed away from the HEPA filter to the side of the cabinet. My ampule is broken.
to withdraw the contents, I'm going to grip the needle and syringe in such a way to introduce the needle into the liquid and start withdrawing the contents. Once all contents are withdrawn, this is disposed of in a sharps container. Here again is one of the opportunities that we have to actually recap a needle because now we must use a filter needle. One hand scoop technique. And this needle actually has a filter in the hub. So as I push the liquid out, it's being filtered as it enters the bag. My dry powder has fully reconstituted. I'm assured adequate mixing. I'm going to re-sanitize the critical site and set it in first air to dry. My needle and syringe is the same one I used earlier because it's only been in contact with that one ingredient. Not quite dry. Okay, now that it's dry, I'm going to insert needle and syringe into the vial and draw the contents of my reconstituted powder using the same technique. Always pulling, never pushing pressure into the vial. And there's my 20 milliliter dose. constituting the powder for an IV admixture. I would then introduce it into a, an IV bag. And dispose of my needle and syringe. This would conclude most of the manipulative techniques that are typically used in day-to-day -day operations of a laminar flow hood.